Yeehaw. Okay, we're in, we're back. Uh, insert transition here, I think, or at least five seconds ago. <laughs> at some point in time, uh -huh. time has passed. Uh, I love doing behind the scenes stuff. I, it's, I think it's a little too rare, so this has been fun so I far. It, well, it's, it's nice because you feel like you're, you know that you're like creating content, but it just feels different. You know what I mean? Like, because it's not it feels, live. It's nice. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't immediately, like, oh, it's like, yeah, somebody will see this. And there will be things and. Eventually. Right. Eventually. Eventually. But, like, part... right now, right now, I'm, like, in a safe place. In a safe <laughs> place where there's no one. <laughs> we can always edit something if something yeah. happens, right? <laughs> yeah. For um, sure. Yeah. Okay. So, this is our uh, semi now official. Uh, it's official. Uh, session oh, negative yeah. one. Yeah. Um, and I think this is going to be all smashed together as part of our uh, YouTube exclusive content for TPK role plays. Um, our, our very experimental 2DM thing with Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, the title of which is um, Insurgents in the Ranks. So we have for this little chat slash semi planning between Sarah and I, um, we're gonna talk about our updates to your one-shot aspect of things, my one-shot aspect of things. And then we're gonna talk about, wait, I typed it out so I wouldn't forget stuff. Um, we're gonna talk about yours, we're gonna talk about mine. We're going to talk about our places. So I think we floated the idea earlier of showing maps, but um, we're nixing that both because of time constraints uh, for both of us. <laughs> Um, yes. But also, but also just I want to be surprised. Like I, I do like the yeah. idea of like it being like if you want to see what the places look like, go watch the session. Dang it! <laughs> right, right. And uh, and I think uh, at least from my end, having more time to like do the maps yeah. in the first place yeah. would just be helpful anyway. So absolutely. So we'll talk about our places at like. <clears throat> how we've outlined them on paper, so to speak. Uh, and then as along with that, like how, it's so like one of the big polls we mentioned earlier for this little three shot that's going to be presented as two one shots. And then one of the big surprises is, uh, haha, it's actually all going to be combined for a third. Um, how we, we think we'll be at least floating initial ideas of how to tie our two together and basically reveal that aspect the surprise there's a third session and we're all going to be together sort mm -hmm. of thing mm -hmm. so uh yeah i think that let's let's get started you want to let's talk about sentient what do we got awesome uh yeah so my my session is sentient um and just like is i get this is all cut together where it's the master artificer uh for the factions been building constructs uh for the Zentarum, or that's what we're rolling with, right? Zentarum. Yes. Um, and you know, to go on hazardous missions that would be, you know, uh, deadly for bioorganic beings. Uh, and uh, basically, the 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 squad, my players, are going to be sent into this guy's uh, home to retrieve in intel uh, from them. So I went out and kind of. Threw it all together. I love. I've got the classic setup of you meet. You're in a tavern. Uh, you've been kind of <laughs> sent there uh, okay. by by uh, your. You're supposed to meet your handler there, uh, Velik Thrawn, uh, who has an urgent request. They'll meet with Velik. Velik's gonna tell him, you know, uh, Ferris Vizzlepiff is my master artificer. I'm very pleased with this name. Uh, he, you know, he was supposed to be building these constructs. He sent in a report, but it got caught off short. We need you to go in and check it out. There's concern that there's like some some people up high up in the Zentarum who are are you know double dipping and <coughs> are traitorous. So they're they're kind of nervous. Uh, Velik is nervous about this. But go into the Great Peak Mountains. Go find go find this intel. Bring it back. Um, and I had the idea because like. I I wanted it to be like it's a lair or whatever, but I kind of loved the idea of instead of having it be like some like reclusive like genius, it's just a guy who picked a really inconvenient place to open up his business. <laughs> like, okay. like I just like, 
kind of wanted it. I wanted to roll with more like he has this only like the most elite can go to there. Like that that my uh, my master artificer is less hermit and more like eccentric. You know what I mean? Just okay. Uh, and so we played with that a little bit. They they show up on on this area to find uh, that the building has been put into some sort of security protocol um, and that, that there's gas that they need to get through to like get inside at all. Um, so through, you know, appropriate checks or whatever they des designate necessary, they have to get into the home, uh, avoiding gas that would kill them. Uh, once inside, they uh, meet uh, one of the very few NPCs that I have throughout this at all uh, is a Fidget, who it will be a smaller construct and act as sort of like a concierge. Nice. Uh, to to uh, Fizzle, Piss, Fizzle Pip's Fine Functioning Friends is the name of the business. Okay. So they walk in. It's essentially a waiting room. Uh, Fidget will uh, is the customer care coordinator and tremendously tenacious tour guide. Uh, who will? Uh, well, I am not are... surprised by any of this, and I love all of it. This is yeah, great. No, it's, I just I wanted it to feel absurd, like. Um, okay. And then I using the the five room dungeon kind of model, uh, designed it out so they can interact with Fidget. Uh, there's a couple of things that Fidget will you know inform them of. The workshop is currently under a security alert, causing the premises to be closed for normal functions. Uh, but because customer service is very important, they'll still try to accommodate these guests. Um, they can present a ticket for a consultation. Uh, there is a ticket taker outside. So if they have the appropriate checks and if they actually take a ticket, uh, this will kind of cue off this piece of it. Um, nice. So Fizzle Pith will tell them, all right, well, you know, uh, Ferris is currently with another customer. So, but you are next in line. Uh, that will give the adventurers, they can just sit and wait. It, they'll wait indefinitely, like, that's not going to change anything, but that's kind of a hint towards, like, the future that, like, there is someone here. Okay. Um, uh, let's see, how did I phrase that? Ferris Fizzlepith is uh, putting the final fixings and finishing fineries on a fellow fellow's friend. Jesus. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I had to write it all out or else I knew I'd get lost. How many times um, did you have to say it before coming here today? <laughs> <laughs> some of them are easier than others. You'll catch me in some that I have not practiced. Okay. Um, yeah, I, yeah, so I would can, not, even after practice, yeah. be able to say some of the things that you've said yeah, already. <laughs> you just, you just gotta go. Uh, so they can present the ticket. Fidget will eventually be like, oh, sorry, like you're kind of held. Um, or they can buy a pass of, for a tour of the workshop, uh, which is kind of what we'll try to push them towards. And then Fidget will give them a tour. Um, if they try, let's see, Please be advised any ambition attempt, ambitious attempts to access areas without appropriate authority will accumulate advanced attention from attack androids. Oh uh, so they can, they can, I mean, murder hobos exist, right? The party mm -hmm. can fight their way through if they want to. Um, if they kill Fidget, which I think is probably very likely, uh, <laughs> they, it, they'll get a small silver key uh, that will override security controls but they're going to have to get to the panel to use it. Um, it's so it kind of like uh, trying to account like which way they go first. You really do need to like go to this room to get a thing to go to that room, but it's up to them how they do that. If they go on the tour, it will take them through the easiest route through the workshop. Okay. Um, starting with the upstairs where Ferris, it's basically his living quarters. Uh, Fidget will give like a small like, Ferris Fizzlepith came from humble beginnings, kind of trying to tell them about how great this master artificer is. Uh, they can investigate the room. Uh, doing so, they'll find uh, some magical diagrams. Uh, and again, this is kind of check-based, but there's magical diagrams with careful notes in the margins indicating final adjustments on some kind of creation. This is the, the uh, construct that we talked about, like kind of feeding into the big big EG stuff. So we're starting to kind of hint that he's been working on a big project. Sure. Um, there will be an unfinished letter addressed <laughs> to your BBEG guy the with those um, like 
uh, and it will dem and it will be Ferris demanding to know what the final scope of the work is, refusing to continue development or deliver the completed constructs, because uh, he Ferris is starting to get the vibe that he's a pawn in a scheme, and he doesn't like that. Ferris is like the showman; he's the star, so he's like, I don't, I'm not liking this. I need to know what the final result is before I'm gonna. Uh, I'm not putting my name on your crappy scheme unless I know what it is. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, you, uh, with the right checks, they can find a small button uh, on the side of a desk and clicking it will reveal the security de-escalation protocols that will basically give them a list of what they need to do to get into the workshop. Uh, first is retrieve a six digit code from the Fizzle 5. Uh, then they need to find Fidget's friend uh, and then uh, punch uh, a code in the storage room panel uh, and use a key to get in. Um, if they get an, a crazy high uh, investigation, they'll find uh, some money, a sketch of Fidget schematics, which would reveal that there is a key inside, uh, and another set of schematics for Gadget. It will be noted that Gadget's gears grind when given good berries, and this is a bug, not a feature. Um, okay. You'll see some like angry notes saying that he's inspired. <laughs> Again, some foreshadowing. Uh, in the basement, it's a traditional storage room. However, on the far end, there will be a, a glass case with uh, five uh, constructs in it. They're all standing in a myriad of poses, more theatrical than the next. There's some dust that covers them, and there are uh, their breastplates have uh, in bold, just ridiculous lettering, uh, the Fizzle Five. Part of the tour, if they have managed to not murder the little construct by now, is that Ferris previously ran a superb sideshow before settling in the valley, which sadly stopped soon after a significant series of stabbings. <laughs> <laughs> so the idea being that Ferris was a showman, he, you know, started making these things and has settled down to just, you know, make them in a singular place. Uh, again, there will be a series of checks. Is hopefully they're trying to investigate. Uh, if not, we can accommodate. Um, but they can find a security panel on the wall and a small hand mirror at the base of the display case. Uh, with a higher check, they'll notice that each of the Fizzle Five have a distinct color coding, uh, like in their armor: red, orange, yellow, uh, green, and blue. Uh, if you examine them closer, with so an even higher score. Uh, you'll notice that one has a small number engraved on the palm of their right hand, and you'll also see that the other four are holding their right hand in strange positions, either behind their backs or slightly curled, uh, kind of trying to indicate that they all have a number uh, in them, but it's going to be difficult to see. Uh, the party will need to make a series of dex checks to get any of the remaining four numbers if they don't want to touch the the actual five. The mirror is there to kind of assist, so they can use that to kind of hold behind the the fizzle five or tilt or see. The mirror is also treasure, which I found this incredible homebrew item, the mirror of Adonis. Um, oh, yes. It's so cool. Um, so let's see, what does it do? It gives you eyes in the back of your head. While holding the mirror of Adonis on your person, you can use a bonus action to speak the mirror's command word. When you do, a ghostly hand appears and grabs the mirror. The hand will hold the mirror in front of you, allowing you to see behind you. While the hand is active, your enemies gain no benefit from flanking you, uh, and it will last for a minute. A creature can use its action to try and pull the mirror away. They have to make a strength check. Uh, and I just like, just a fun magic item for them to have. If they touch the, the constructs, the Fizzle Five, of course, battle will ensue, uh, and they will have to defeat these uh, robots. Um, the code to the panel is uh, 167235 that they can uh, input into the code. That is hinted at earlier um, when they arrive at Fizzlepith's Fine Functioning Friends, founded in 1672.3. That way, like trying to kind of call back and give them clues ahead of time. Um, they're able to do that. It will. Uh, <laughs> be some scraping above and fidget should the it still be alive will announce that the workshop is now accessible huh. going into the workshop they'll be able to kind of see some of the more intense things that ferris was working on um that's uh 
there's a four and a half inch high wireframe model of a human figure in a in a claw machine uh that they can like the game retrieve. yeah mm -hmm. hell yeah <laughs> yeah uh the figure has an exquisitely detailed copper heart inside the dull rib cage uh if they found this the schematics earlier they'll know that this is gadget and they'll have to play a claw machine game to retrieve gadget using sleight of hand checks to try and get gadget out of the machine uh gadget will talk to them uh he'll complain that he was a failed contraption uh, and he failed because he developed a personality uh and he'll thank the party for getting him out of the machine and be happy to like help them turn off the rest of the security protocols uh and uh, if fidget's still alive it ba basically he'll be like you should just kill fidget um <laughs> at which point <laughs> um, if if fidget's if fidget is already dead he'll show them where the key uh is inserted in uh to turn everything off um gadget will also be able to give the party information on who ferris's client is which is ruthie uh, and aaron i always goof up how to say this aaron aaron yes that's aaron, how i aaron say yes? it yep aaron that's yes. how i'm gonna say it uh yeah so aaron yes uh is the last uh uh client that Ferris is seeing uh, and Gadget will relay to them, you know, that uh, Ruthie is the Aaron Yes, has been you know, taking, has kind of seemed to take ownership of the show uh, she's been in and out of the workshop from the calibration chamber she's been talking with Ferris about building an army, uh, Ferris seems less like himself, he seems to be some under some kind of charm spell uh, and Gadget actually hasn't seen Ferris in a, a couple of days. He went in the calibration chamber and hasn't come out. This leads them to like the final encounter. Once they get in there, they will find the Aaron Yes, whose name is Aura Ruth, but you can call me Ruthie. Um, she'll ask, you know, what the hell, where did you guys come from? And reveal that she too is a member of the Zentarum um, and that she is here essentially to kind of take over these items, uh, saying that, Oh, let's see. She's charmed Ferris to craft her companions, intending to use them against her rival in the Nine Hells, so for selfish reasons. She'll acknowledge that they were intended for the faction, but will suggest that they all handle this like adults. Finders keepers, losers weavers. Nice. So, you know, try to, like, balance it out. If they ask, Ferris will be nowhere to be seen. Uh, if they ask, she'll just kind of lazily respond. He was bothering me, so I went uh, to t I sent him to take care of something in the back. Uh, a fight will break out. It just will. This is the big, big moment of the thing. Yeah. Uh, and two shield guardians will assist Ruthie. Once they've beaten her, there's a chamber across the room that will glow with a magical energy as the construct that was there um, harvesting Ferris's soul uh, completes its task they will hear the you know transfer complete initiating diabolical duo dominion protocol <laughs> uh, <laughs> and you know several parts of the defeated construct will glow lift off the ground assemble into like a, a new shape and throw itself out of a window into the ravine beyond it's sort of like a well that was weird kind of moment uh i'm kind of i'm intentionally intending it for it to just be like that was fucking weird we don't know what the hell uh, the party will then be able to, you know, gather any research notes that they find. Uh, there will be some some light treasure in, uh, and then they can message back to Velik, their handler, to say, "Hey, we did it," um, and so that they know that it's all complete. So that's pretty much it. Trying to like give enough little injection points for the larger scheme, hinting at like this machine was being used for a larger purpose and. Uh, trying to kind of like push towards you know everything's not as they seem mm -hmm. so we can give that drop in the in the third all together um i think it's pretty great awesome um, that's that's the session i'm i'm excited it's it's just the right amount of silly yeah <laughs> it's got <laughs> it's got all sorts of sarah flavor in it and that's Oh, for sure. I, I, Absolutely. That's half the reason I wanted to do this, uh, not only with another person, but with you specifically after, you you know, we mentioned earlier the whole thing about, hey, we should do something because we haven't done that. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, like, put, putting all of 
Sarah into what was just a, hey, let's do a thing about robots for one part and then make the other oh, yeah. part. I love it. Um, mm -hmm. Very puzzly too. And I think yeah, that's, we, mm -hmm. we mentioned that earlier as well. You were gonna say yeah. something? Yeah, no, that was kind of the design, right? It's like, it's, it has to be a one shot, but I want them to like be challenged and, and have to like, I want them to use their skills or, or try out things. So making sure that there's enough things for them to kind of look into or investigate enough places where like a well played, a well laid plan can go sideways. The, the you know, leaving the wiggle room for the, the good player interaction. And yeah, like I figured if we're, if it's a if it's a place of business, right? Like, there's not gonna be a whole ton of like, uh, crazy like creatures running around. It's probably mm -hmm. just gonna be some some well programmed droids. But even then, they're not gonna want them to kill the customers. Right. So <laughs> trying to like keep it to a point where getting through the workshop is challenging. Uh, but not just like hack and slash. They can hack and slash. Like if that's their choice, that's fine. We There's can an throw option some to little ads. Yeah, we can throw like, you know, uh, Fidget's not going down without a fight, but if the, if that's what they want to do, I'm not okay. gonna stop them. Well, I I love that you mentioned, uh, you know, you, you wanting to go that sort of route versus like uh, the sort of place that would have all sorts of crazy creatures and that sort of thing, mm -hmm. because that's exactly what I did. Yes, uh, this is very good. <laughs> so we're going to have this really cool juxtaposition between the two individuals uh, leading into the collective. So um, you mind if we go through mine then real quick? Yes, and then no, we'll kind please. of. I'm so excited. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So there's, there's a fair amount of detail that I still need to work out in said creatures. But uh, I did mm -hmm. want to emphasize the fact that um, that is kind of the the basis, the gist of um, the miracle brew. So, uh, rather than the whole uh, business oddities sort of aspect, mine is uh, much more along the lines of the intentionally secluded layer type of approach. Mm -hmm. um, and we will we will I think start out with a, a gathering of the party with my character who is i think uh i think we've landed on brother and sister mm -hmm. um so vasik thron mm -hmm. um, I love it. and later on you and i uh part of this is we'll talk about our, our two individual yes. when we talk about the combined thing um mm -hmm. so we will have you know a similar sort of maybe not in a tavern uh but in like a zenterim hideout, if you will, or, or mm -hmm. like headquarters, what have you. We'll, we'll work out that kind of detail, but uh, that sort of give them the mission, send them off. Uh, we have an idea of where this laboratory is, but part of the pull for using this guy, um, Josk Tux, is none of us really actually know where it is. So the beginning of this, uh, getting to the place, is based awesome. a little bit on the, uh, what what's the old school adventure? Uh, I had it and then I totally blanked out where you have to find the lair in order to get in in the first place. I am, I'm unfamiliar, but I think that's such a cool idea. Oh, and I, I, I absolutely love it. I'm gonna kick myself for not remembering the name because it is like famous, famous. But anyway, um, so that's gonna be the kind of pull of it. And then from the get go, um, it's not not really anywhere near as much puzzles and, and gadgets and uh, figure out how to open door A and you have to open door A to get to door B sort of thing. It's gonna be much more along the lines of uh, accidentally discovering test subjects. Um, from various potions and brews. So um, my outline includes, you know, various rooms kind of on that a similar um, mm -hmm. five dungeon room kind of concept. Um, the only, th so there's like three major, I know there's more rooms than this, but there's kind of three major aspects. Um, and the third is the only one that's really hundred percent necessary to find. That would be the final laboratory. But the other two are where we're taking other opportunities to play with highly customized creatures. So we're taking so sort cool. of fifth edition monster templates, um, with zombies and, uh, uh, constructs and, and dialing them up to whatever level we ended up land end up landing on to yeah, put like the 15, party in. I think. Yeah. yeah. Um so among, you know, some random rooms that are clearly messy 
you know, secluded, mostly by himself, mad scientist sort of laboratory lair. Um, mm -hmm. They're going to end up running into, at one point, a construct storage. And this construct okay. storage will yes. be kind of the first uh, intentional and significant tie-in to Sentient, where mm -hmm. these things are being constructed for use in the Zentrum. Um, especially if we do end up doing sentient first, then, you know, if anybody yes. from my party watched that session, then they'll yeah. be like, oh, mm -hmm. th or this is versa. one of those dangerous yeah. things. Yeah, or vice versa. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that'll be a, a tie-in between the two that's sort of hinty. Um, and then, so these ones will be kind of like designed, you know, physical look will be, they're clearly being used for like alchemical work. Uh, they've got mm -hmm. beakers, they've got maybe tweezers and tongs. Um, maybe partially empty containers and they're just kind of sitting there. Um, and if they end up getting like tampered with, it kind of triggers and, and they end up attacking, but it, there's the opportunity to just pass them by and maybe gain some insight as to what they were built for, why they're here sort of thing, and then they can move on. Um, the second is going to be a locked, uh, what I'm calling a guest room, which mm -hmm. was originally purposed for getting test subjects under a trick. Um, okay. And these would have been in some places like ne'er do wells within the Zentrum, and then other sometimes uh, just like captured peasants, like people who yeah, wouldn't be missed, yeah. sort of thing. Um, on a basis of you're helping with a, a grand cause, you're uh, you're you're going to be a major part of our organization, and we're going to give you riches and in wonders to right. help with that. Yeah. But yeah. what's really happened is that they they just straight up end up being test subjects for these crazy right. potions and brews. Mm -hmm. um, and this room in particular, I want to do a little bit of a play. So I, what I've written down is like custom zombies. Very intelligent um, mm -hmm. and very amped up. I'm thinking much like uh, I Am Legend zombies. Okay. If you've okay. seen that movie. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so not quite capable of speech, but obviously very intelligent compared to the, you know, the basic zombie in, in d and 5th edition. And I want to play with them a little bit on the concept of um, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. Yeah, I think this is great. This is awesome. Right. So if the, if the party does try to get into this barricaded room, essentially, then these zombies won't quite attack on sight, but they'll clearly be freaked out. Um, mm -hmm. and display some qualities of like, right. We're going to do this or not. And, like, and please see don't, how, but like we can. Yeah. Right. And then see what the party mm -hmm. does with it. Um, eventually these three will, it, uh, it should become obvious. I think at some point, depending on what insight the party tries to get, that these three are like at the tail end of some sort of transformation. It's not complete yet. Um, mm -hmm. But then, you know, at some point in this adventure, the, it'll complete and they'll just snap and end mm -hmm. up being part of a fight somewhere, whether it's right here or whether right. it's when uh, if the constructs get engaged or the ultimate fail safe is going to be uh, in the final encounter in the final room. Okay. So mm -hmm. we'll see what happens with all of that. Yeah, um, it's a, that's my thing. Is a lot of this. We'll see what happens. Yep, there's kind of like an ABC <laughs> subset yep. one, two, three for everything, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as there always is. Um, but then we we do eventually end up getting to the final central laboratory chamber. Um, I'm gonna pull up my note here just to make sure I don't miss anything on it. Um, so the the alchemist's name is Josk Tux. Um, he's when we see him, he's going to be like this severely disfigured, burned, and now technically undead changeling. Mm. And we will eventually learn that the, the intent of the particular potion he's working on, that is the basis of this adventure, was meant to be eternal life without undeath. Mm -hmm. um, and then the tampering by you and I, in character, is uh, to, to kill him. It was intended to just kill him. Um, but right. we messed up. We kind of mm -hmm. we kind of ended up uh, making him undead instead of killing him, yeah. and yeah. you know while we succeeded in messing up uh, messing him up so that he doesn't have his hands on the final product miracle brew, um, mm -hmm. our plan kind of fell through from the get go, and right. then this final highly customized changeling character 
is mm -hmm. going to be like all warped, undead. He's going to have, there's going to be a little bit of randomization into what does it change into on this turn type of thing. That's and then so what does cool. it do? Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's going to be the gist of it. There's going to be a lot of like really customized creatures and the insight into the whole potion thing, of course, and tie-ins to the construct aspect. Um, let's see, did I miss anything? Uh, there's a lot, yeah, there's a lot of if then, you know, with whether the mm -hmm. constructs and the other zombies, uh, the no evil zombies get encountered or not. When does that happen? Um, but at the very end, we have a note from Vosik, so my actual character, regarding the potion and its intended purpose. Um, it's going to be missing some key details as part of the, you know, not mm -hmm. telling him everything, but getting him to do the work sort of thing. Uh, it's also going to contain piles and containers of ingredients. Um, any medicine check of a fairly high, but definitely doable at a high level uh, check will reveal that one partially empty potion decanter in the group contains elements of poisons and toxins, uh, which would not match a recipe that's but, sitting right yeah. next to it. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so based some some basic insight could reveal that this was this is the potion, and it was definitely tampered with on purpose in some way. Um, there's a little so so here's the part where there's a, there's some details that we should fill in together, or at least mm -hmm, put absolutely. the ideas on the table. Um, so you've got at the very end of yours, a construct gets completed and essentially escapes. Mm -hmm. We're using mm -hmm. that as one of the lead ins to the main event at the end of the third final combined session. Yep. One mm -hmm. thing I've been struggling with, so I could I could if you have any ideas um, mm -hmm. is after this point, I don't really have a an equivalent to the construct that escaped. So I don't know if we want to go with like a a bottle is discovered, like the the actual final mm -hmm. product, but it, it happened after this guy was turned sort of thing, or maybe one is missing. So somebody came and swiped it and just left everything here. But you could you could have like uh you know, if they're doing their report back, you could you could have I'm trying to think of why our guys would want them continue forward kind of a deal this is a good question um i mean yeah like i feel like there's like there's something missing is a good like uh like you know you're you're do, you're turning in your mission report and they're mm -hmm. like wait our our intelligence said there should have been x like is there x like and that oh, way okay. it's kind of like a oh there is like there's something definitively missing you know okay uh, or, or it could be something's there that shouldn't have been, you know, like some, some kind of, uh, clue towards like the larger scheme, like, um, I don't know, like a, like a message or an item or something that like ties back in. So again, as they're reporting back, like everything that they found in this final room, we also found this, it can be like, what's. Why would why would this person have this thing kind of a deal? And then it becomes like a loose ends sort of situation as to why our people want your party dead is because they found something that ultimately ties the two back to like through gotcha. the whole scheme. Like they have they have physical evidence of like the duo's like participation in this in this caper, right? Sure. Perhaps it's something like that. Okay. Yeah. I've uh I'm going to get all that and, and play around with it and see what we can do. Uh, mm -hmm. That is very helpful. Thank you. Yeah, so, of course. So then we've got um, you and I will end up having to do a session like 2.5. <laughs> yep. Yes, uh, where we kind of touch base after they kind of are done. The, their two are done. And how are we going to bring it home kind of a deal? Right, exactly. Uh, and then of course, incorporating all the details of mm -hmm. what happened with each session and how we can sort of use that to gauge mm -hmm. the final writing of what's going to happen in that final encounter. Um, mm -hmm. But then the gist of everything is going to be teaser at the end of whoever goes first. Um, mm -hmm. And then we'll probably have to play it off as like, oh, looks like we will have to use our backup session 
Uh, yeah. So we'll be back on you know the mm -hmm. second date, and then whoever goes second will end with uh, surprise. We're actually also going to be going on that date combined mm -hmm. session. Mm -hmm. Prepare yourselves, yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And then, and then that, uh, you know, session 2.5 essentially will include us planning out. I don't know if we'll record it or not, because it's going to be more mm -hmm. of a planning session and yeah. you know, not as much mm -hmm. of a fun behind the scenes thing. But mm -hmm. that'll have to include. So it'll be a combination of, I think, what you've put together for Sentient and what I've put together for Miracle Brew. There's going to be this this really cool final confrontation of, uh, I would imagine, several puzzles and Mm -hmm. gadgets and tinkers uh outcomes and then uh a, as well as the customized creatures not only our two characters but this big final pick which part you're gonna hit construct thing to fight at the end sorry i'm making i might like as we're talking i'm getting ideas so i want to make sure i don't <laughs> lose them yep uh let's see uh, let's see the... Uh, I mean, I, this is behind the scenes, but you were talking of like, you know, the final place, like, what does that look like? And it's like, well, Ferris did commissions for the duo, right? So there's going to mm -hmm. be, and that's something I can lightly reference, like while Fidget is like talking, like giving the tour, you know, uh, Ferris recently completed a special, you know, order of blah, 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 like foreshadowing, like, so when they get there, Oh, yep, here's more of Ferris's contraptions that uh -huh. were specifically designed for these two, for the bad guys, um, and kind of like feeding that in. So it's kind of tracing back okay. all the way. So, love it. Like a throw, like that's my thing. I love the throwaway stuff. Uh -huh. And then later you go, like, did you take notes? Because <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> By the way, this is all related. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Um, okay. So we've covered the gist of yeah. what we intended to cover today. Is there anything else that you can think of that we should? Um, the, I mean, the only maybe just like a couple of minutes. We we have established our BBEGs, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, Velik and Vosik, right? Yes. Um, oh maybe, yes, we got to talk about us. Yeah, the let's, main event. Let's talk about them for a little <laughs> bit because I um, we've established them. They now have names, so they're real. Mm -hmm. Um. What are you what are you thinking like personality wise uh, for for your guy? So I'm uh, I, I would love to do something that's very different from well, let me back up. Uh, mechanically, uh, I'm thinking, you know, I'm running to the wind with uh, with this whole custom monster thing. So this will be mm -hmm. the first time that I'm developing like what I want to do is to do a character, like a player character. Yes to yeah, level 15 yeah. or so, and mm -hmm. then translate that to a monster stat block. Um, mm -hmm. So what I'm thinking is uh, very spellcasting heavy. Okay. Uh, Cause that's very familiar territory for me with player characters, that sort of thing. Um, but then personality wise to, to answer your question, um, I'm thinking super haughty, vain, overconfident, but packs enough of a punch that he could back it up sort of thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but just like nose in the air, you are beneath me. Uh, my sister and I are geniuses and there's no way this plan mm -hmm. can fail. Sort of like mm -hmm. just get out of my way kind of guy. Yeah. Okay. I love that because I was thinking like, because we've got to be like Zentara me folks. So there's got to be a little bit of nefariousness to it. Mm -hmm. But for uh, for my homie, uh, for Bellic, I was thinking something a little bit more laid back. So, like, if you're, like, the high energy, like, ambition, like, we're geniuses, I'm kind of the, like, yeah, we are. And, like, kind of going more the, like, punch bro or, like, sister kind of route. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, when they meet her, she will seem like, we got to do this mission. Yeah, you got to go get this stuff. It's really important. Like, really important. Very more, like, deadpan kind of, like, that cool, like kind of bad and if they like push her or whatever it's that like instant like don't fuck with me energy like, nice. like you know what i mean like uh -huh. it's it's laid back but just like right under the surface is that like rage and and kind of like manic anger 
Nice. So I think that's great. I like you. We, you're like the face and I'm the fist. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, do you have a mechanical concept in mind, like a race class? Yeah, I was, it was going to kind of go more like the direction, like where I make an actual like character and then try to translate that over into like a monster. I was thinking very much along the lines of like tanky, you know, so like. Okay a paladin or that were like a fighter kind of combo there um just to give that more melee engagement which i think goes really well with the um kind of the vibe of the the session i'm running which is very like mechanical robots metal and like to have my bbeg kind of more in line with that so thinking kind of like tricked out armor kind of a vibe you know what i mean like, uh-huh and that like, just again, gave me an idea they've been working they've been working with ferris for some time so uh -huh. you know so that just gave me an idea Hit let me, me know what it. you think as Hit part of the it. like mixing and matching of from the two the two individual elements sort of thing i wonder if we could work out that uh velik velik right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh has maybe a potion or three that Ooh. have some fun properties she can pop during a final fight. And then Vosik has maybe some sort of mechanically enhanced like pop-up armor, almost like Iron Man style sort of thing. I love that. Or if he's a spellcaster, something that like gives him the ability to like warp his spell like like twin cast or something you know what i mean mm -hmm. like a, something that's like on his person that enhances magical ability to make it so he can do things that he shouldn't be able to infinity do. gauntlet kind of thing yeah kind of okay a, you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah. like it's like it's like he has he has something that's like casting the spell for him like he like inputs like something and it's very iron man-esque right it's yeah. doing the magic and making it so he can do things like that he shouldn't be able to yeah However, that like plays out like bone you can now bonus action he can bonus action cast first level spells or some shit right because mm. it like it takes the magic feedback it's into itself sort of a deal instead of like his body doing it love i don't it. know love it we could go on forever we, we probably will when we do our month. session 2.5 <laughs> yeah no i love the i love the potions too and what's great about that is um the other thing i was thinking uh to try and like tie some of your more more of the potion stuff directly into the construct deal like the construct has like a reservoir where some sort of liquid would have been held like a fuel source perhaps mm -hmm. or something it you know guessing that and where i have the letter addressed to your guy Vasek, we can include like you know ps like how did the potions work out like you know or something you know or like how's how's the gadget like trying to like hint towards the end just very lightly and only if they find it and only if they care to remember it <laughs> awesome this is shaping Brilliant. up quite well I think this is gonna be. I think this is gonna be sick. I'm like, so fucking I'm, pumped. I'm excited. I'm excited <laughs> for this. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Yeah, but that's it. Like I. So next steps for me. Um, most of my monsters are just very like pulled from uh, the monster manual. We got some animated armors. They'll each mm -hmm. have animated swords, kind of a deal. Um, the little fidget will be some homebrewy stuff. Um, and then uh, Ruthie is just straight up an Aaron yes because I think they're dope as hell as is. Absolutely. Um, but we'll, I'll, I'll work on Velik. We'll try to get her kind of uh, scoped out as to what she what she can do. Uh, and then maps, fin finalizing those. And then mm -hmm. we're casting call, right? Like we're, yep. we're about to that point, which is wild. That's going to be cool. And we've got, awesome. we've got dates. Hey, for all of you guys catching this, uh, because this, this uh, the one combined video now, which looks like it'll be about hour and a half, maybe a bit more, uh, which is perfect. Uh, this is not getting released until after the final live session. So mm -hmm. we're gonna, we'll announce this content being part of the YouTube aspect of this after all is said and done. So people who are interested can kind of look back and Mm -hmm. see what we were thinking in the moment before we got there yeah. sort of thing and yeah, I, uh, think it's, I think it's great 
yeah, how it played out. <laughs> yep, how it ended up shaping up and playing out. So look at these beautiful outlines just get shredded. <laughs> none of they're totally gonna go here. Yoink. Yep, and then we get it's it's our two point five, and it's just us going. What do we do? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, th I think we've both done a pretty good job of that because uh, yeah. I, I think that mm -hmm. you have done an excellent job of making sure that, you know, especially, excuse me, all your puzzles and everything, like nothing vital will get missed if a certain yes. thing gets skipped. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with mine as well. And then everything in between the meeting your person to get the mission and then final encounter at the end of each one shot is uh, met with plenty of opportunities to fill a bunch of lore yep. and hints in, but yep. again, nothing critical will be missed if they just go straight yep. to the end. Yeah, it's having having NPCs kind of strategically like place like up front, middle, mm -hmm. and that way if they end up just like murder hoboing, at the bare minimum, Ruthie can monologue. You know what yeah. I mean? Like <laughs> it's, it's, there's trying to make sure that and the other thing too, if they double back, they're once they're in the house, they're stuck in the house. Like mm -hmm. trying to like make it so like if there's a point of no return, they have ample like ways to either go back and get what they need, or kind of like you can't pass this until you've been given this information. Now you have it, great. Like yep. they're little gates. <laughs> yep. But I think we should be. I'm I'm so excited. I think your I think your monsters are sick. And like, I can't wait to see what that changeling's gonna do. Yeah. What's that changeling gonna do though? It's so cool. it's gonna be wild. I have some I have some cliff note ideas, and uh, it'll be. Oh, I'm so excited to just flesh it all out for uh, doing doing homebrew monsters is a big part of what I've been doing with D and D lately overall. So yeah, uh, that's gonna be fun. Sick. Awesome. All right, phenomenal. Sweet. Well, that's I think that's gonna be a wrap then uh, for. Yes for all of our behind the scenes uh, YouTube exclusive content for insurgents in the ranks. So if you're watching this before uh, checking out the shows on YouTube, we hope you enjoy it. Uh, if yeah. you're watching this after, after we hope you did. <laughs> uh, we hope it we hope it worked out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it will, but mm. Oh yeah. Uh, it's it's going to be fantastic and thank you Sarah again for teaming up with oh, me on this you. pet project. It's going to be so much fun. It's going to be sick. Yeah. It's great. So right. yeah, so let's let's outro. Um who, Sarah, yes. who are you? Where where can we find you? All that jazz. Uh. Uh, hi, yeah, uh, I'm Osarix Franco. You can find me on Twitch and Twitter at Osarix Franco. I do a variety of TTRPG content, both on TPK Roleplay and over at Nat20. Um, I've got a bunch of different irons in the fire as far as like players uh, being a GM. I just wrapped up the Bard's Refrain, which was my year long campaign streamed on TPK Roleplay. Uh, so check that out if, if you like what you see here in my style of GMing or want to know more of those things that's the best place to see that uh, but we do have new stuff coming up Ooh. but that's I mean that's pretty much it all right sweet and I'm that magic juice um, you can find me on Twitch Twitter Instagram and TikTok for mostly D&D content exactly as you see my name right there um, and I, I GM1 campaign, at least for now, with TPK Roleplay. I, I would imagine it's going to become more than that. Up to and including this uh, <laughs> this event right here. And um, yeah, I think that's, that's going to be the gist of it. So the next time you see this duo together will be uh, after, I think, the surprise reveal that it is not a one-shot. It is not a one-shot. It is actually a three-shot. And bamboozles! <laughs> So good. All right. We're out of here. Bye, everybody. Bye.